In the previous episode, we upgraded the elevator, filled in some blank spaces with new ponds before we built this wacky transporting system that takes prismarine crystals all the way to this little workshop where we crush them into nether quartz and glowstone. But in this episode, we need to build a lot more floating bits with big trees so we can decorate a bunch of these blander spots that we have in the background and also just see what else we can do to make all of this look just that little bit better. But before we jump into the bulk of today's episode, I should just mention that it will be a bit of a shorter episode and also a bit more build orientated because I got hung up on work and it's just been really, really busy. So instead of giving you guys nothing, I'm going to give you a little bit of a build episode. So with that said, let's get some resources gathered. And the first stop on the resource gathering adventure is the Mesa area. And yeah, I still love this area so much. But way over here because we need some grey dye. So if we run in here, we need grey dye. And I think three stacks will be more than enough. And then we need some sand as well. But I do believe I have a whole bunch in my backpack. And gravel, we're going to get back over at the main base. So here at the main base, we've got quite a variety of places to choose from. But this is always the easiest part for gravel or the easiest place. Because we've got so much. So I'm just going to grab a bunch. And now that we're in this building, we need to craft up a bunch of grey concrete powder. And just then send it through the washer so we can get some grey concrete. So crafting. Next stop is the farming area where we've triggered the leaf harvester to gather some leaves. Because we're going to need a bunch of birch and azalea leaves. And this process is taking a while. I wonder if I should maybe bone meal some of these. Back to the main base to grab some packed mud. And now that we've got all the resources gathered, it's raining. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait it out and then we'll plot a few schematics together. So I've got the first sets of schematics loaded up and the idea is that we'll have one island like this over there with a single tree. And we've got some crops growing on there as well. And then we'll have a second one in that area. A third one right over here because this stretch was just a bit too barren. And now we have... This little island with just a bunch more vegetable patches on it, we will add some more water. And then that way you can also jump over it. And the last one will be right over there. So I think that's good for the first five schematics to be placed in this area to uplift it. So I've got the schematic cannon down there. And I've got all the necessary backpacks in place. So if we plonk in the first schematic, we check our clipboard. We should see that, okay, we only need these items so the first one is the framed items that's perfect we'll just place down the framed backpack so that should automatically eliminate some of those and now we just need tomatoes and onions onions i think we can harvest a bunch of here i don't know if i've been harvesting and keeping them i can't remember no i haven't so we can just go ahead and rip these out i guess i could have used fortune but oh well so we've got some of those and then for the tomatoes we can just harvest a bunch of these as well and there we go again with the achievements i really don't know what's going on with the game but now we should have everything we need so we can just turn these tomatoes into seeds and that should be it let's check it yeah we've got it all we have it all so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna let the schematic cannon run, build that one and the rest as well. And then I'll bring you guys back to find out what you think of the few additions before we continue with the rest. And there's a bunch of glow ink in the background. Hmm.
this is take number two because i recorded previous clip without unmuting my mic and yeah it's it was a failure but anyway we've ended up adding all the trees that we shown in the previous clip in this area but also a few extra ones like that one over there this one and that one and one over there and one over here with also some additional veggie patches in this area and i do have to admit this whole area looks a whole lot more lived in with the different trees all around the area i do however still think that i need to just see what it looks like from up there and it doesn't disappoint i mean just look at how cool this area looks there's still a lot of places we can add more barges like in that area and this area but for now i think this actually looks really well lived in and it just does so much for the area okay <laughs> we just fell through those two girders anyway i do think this area looks really cool and i can't wait for the crops to grow and just bring that extra bit of life to it like those tomatoes over there but yeah this looks amazing so the next little project i want to tackle is in this area over here and what i want to do is just give the fish that we get from the guardian farm a more permanent home and i'm thinking what better place to do that than right over here so i'm thinking that we can maybe do some form of chopping area up here so we'll do a little water wheel let's just get in here we'll do a little water wheel maybe that gives it power in this area and then over here we can just do a little bit of a conveyor belt with a knife system or deployer chopping the fish and giving us fish fillets and bone meal so this area i'm going to work on but the first thing we need to do is get a source of power in here and how are we going to do that well we're just going to repeat another one of those water spouts right there okay so we've got this whole little spout in and it's exactly the same as the rest of the designs i just used the bigger design we had over there and i will decorate it a bit more but the idea is that we have the spout over here and then we will do some form of structure with the water wheel on it but for now i think we first need to figure out where what goes in this area so i'm going to rip out all of these barrels like so and this opens up the area perfectly and what i think is we need to have a drawer control slave over here a final draw controller in this area and then we just do those two like that and that should be perfect i don't think we need anything else we're gonna have to connect it via belt so we'll do a, a brass funnel over there and a normal funnel on that side this one will have to look in and that one's going to look out but we're just going to keep it like that for now and then we're just going to go ahead and add belts in this area so two shafts and a belt and that's our whole transporting system done it's quite fairly simple we need to add a filter onto this telling it to only extract raw cod and we're just going to leave that at one i don't mind it being one because it's just going to process over time and then right here in the center somewhere we need to add a slicer so i think the slicer would be perfect in this area it might change all depending on the rotation of it because it needs to rotate a certain direction so if i see it's rotating the wrong way i'll just move it on one because an additional cog will fix that but that should be the entire system so now what we need to do is we need to hook up the raw cord drawer down there with this storage system on this side and we need to get the water wheels in so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the connection of the cod storage or camera and i'm going to build a little structure for the water wheel and then i'll bring you guys back so now that we have this system in place we have the water in place we also finish the transportation of the raw cord from there so we do shoot it over using a the item drain system that goes into a drawer slave on this side and that just runs up the corner over here which we will decorate and it allows the items to pop out on top over here but now it comes the big part of powering it all and i think how we're going to do this is we're going to just break through that over there which is perfect and for now i'm just going to run a bunch of temporary blocks right along here and that is just so we know exactly where the center of the water wheel needs to go and if i'm not mistaken if we place the center right here it's not going to work 
because we need the water to fall on this little edge over here which is perfect because we need this line to be cogs in the end so we're gonna have to go from a shaft to cogs so we're gonna go one back and then the water wheels will sit right over there okay see that's perfect that's where it's gonna have to go so let me quickly grab this one place that over there and now we have those two in place and now we just need to route the power all the way from over there into this house and we might have to do something funky at the back here and that way we will be able to power the slicing machine so i'm going to rip out this i'm going to see to getting the power into this area and then i'll bring you guys back okay so i've connected it all up with a shaft and this shaft runs into this corner over here where it will run into a bigger cog and from there it goes down into a rotational speed controller and we've got a line of smaller cogs over there so if i were to place down the gearbox and why can't i do that oh uh, i think it's because it's too close to that okay but that's not a problem let's rip out maybe that one and this one and this one we add that over there this over here and then we just do a normal gear gearbox right over here and it spins it is spinning the wrong direction i think and we also still need to power the belt itself but that's not a big problem but at least it's spinning so we can also then adjust this just do it the opposite side and now it should spin in the right direction so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hook up the belt off camera and then i'll bring you guys back once it started processing so we've got this whole area sorted and everything's working and turning the right way the only thing you'll notice is items are not coming out from this area and that is basically because this little line of drawers we have running from there up to here does not have a draw controller so we can fix that by running a single line of draw controllers underneath this but what that will do is that will allow that will show a bunch of draw controllers over here and i'm not really sure if i want to or uh, not draw controllers um what do you call those things trims um from there to here and i think that's fine you're gonna see the trims but we can hide it behind some of the frame trap doors so if we were to run trims like this and then let's rip out this one and put this one down there first and if we place this down it should send out items why is it not sending out items oh is it because i think we need to rip this out actually so let's rip this out and then we'll place down a drawer add a stack of raw cod lock the drawer quantify it and if we pick it up now and we put it back over here yes see now it works um why is it not cutting is it because it's too slow let's speed this up to let's say 128 there we go now it's working so now we've got a functioning system and what we can do is we can just do that and that should now in theory just continue to make fish fillets and bone meal and that's another farm done so now we all that's left to do is decorate this water wheel get it on a stand or something decorate this area a little bit and that will be it for this little fish processing hut and we're back in this world with shaders on and it looks amazing but let me show you so you can see that for yourself so right over here we've got the whole ejector system on this wall we've added another tree in this area just to bring a bit more life onto these runes and then again we just pushed through the, through the runes added some trees added some branches some dirt some root dirt and everything and it just looks so cool in this area but when we head over to the fisherman's hut we have the whole water wheel system the water pouring down and we added this little structure housing the water wheels and again i think it just fits this area and it just fills it a little bit better so that's looking quite neat and then it goes into this building over here we've changed this over to a little bit somewhat of a balcony it's more a rundown type balcony so you can watch out and then if you enter over here we've got like a little bedroom we've got some storage space and we've got the whole processing area we've already filled up on fish fillets bone meal and not nearly so i think we might as well go ahead add a little emerald upgrade to that 
but that's it that's it for this whole build and i think it's such a simple build but it just works and it's a very easy little farm and a way to process all the fish we get from the guardian farm and then just to see what it all looks like from up here yeah it's looking so so much better i mean i like the whole area with the ruins but just adding these trees just make it makes it feel like it's been here for a little bit longer i do wish we could maybe do one in this area but i think it's gonna just bug out the already their design but i will look into that but for now i think the new addition and the new water wheel system over there looks really cool but sadly that's it for this episode like I mentioned it's a bit of a different episode with a whole lot more building and not that much create but IRL has been way busy but I do have a few things upcoming so keep an eye out on the community posts and also down in the comments let me know what you think of the build and the form and then remember like subscribe and I'll see you all in the next episode till then bye for now